low viewers. Today we have uh, Audi A6. Uh, the client said it has some strange behavior. So I'm going to hook up the vacuum and show you what error codes we are getting. I already poked the vacuum in the socket. I'll try to focus. Oops. Uh, hope you can you guys can see. I really hope it's focus most of the time when I zoom the shot is really boring for cuts okay and the DPF is a part computer bank one go work go work go work most of the go works are dead four of them it's three uh, liter diesel engine, so it's V6 and uh, it has six cylinders, so it has six go ports. Four, four of them is uh, going out. I am sure the car is starting really hard on cold weather. So the only thing that may cause a strange behavior is the DPF. So now I'm going to start the car and see what data we are getting. Okay, so I started the car. Uh, that's why we're getting the fuel pressure. I think it's okay. We hope you can see on the camera. But the exhaust gas, uh, the specs are 300 milligrams per stroke. And we're getting around 450 actual, the real data. So we have a lot of difference of the specification and the actual. For sure, they're setting, they're setting the DPF code. So I'm almost sure the DPF is cocked uh, and need to be uh, changed. So. I'm going to show you on the board war what I mean. Okay, so I know my drawing skill is not the best, but this is the DPF itself. Uh, it placed on the exhaust uh, pipe. So exhaust come from the from the engine, go through the DPF and go through the back of the exhaust from the in outlet. So when, when it got scoked. I can see these dots. The exhaust gas go back through the e EGR and going into the engine. Uh, most of the time, if it's a uh, new DPF, the exhaust gas uh, go to the EGR. Uh, the, there in the specification that is shown in the diagnostic tool. Uh, but this time we have a lot more gases going through the EGR. So for sure the gases are uh, going back because of the cook here and go back to the EGR and the pressure here is higher than the uh, than the specification so that's why we're getting higher milligrams per stroke on the EGR so for sure the DPF needs to be uh, replaced uh, but now our country nobody replaced them uh, our uh, technical tests uh, every year doesn't need uh, and see the DPFs are, are uh, there or not. So we're going to uh, remove the DPF uh, with software, software remove and physical. Uh, you need a good uh, supply for the battery because when you start reading the ECM, uh, if the electric fan start uh, engage, uh, you will uh, have uh, a lot of current 
draw, so the battery can go dead and uh, uh, it's not very good when you're reading the ECM or writing it uh, to your battery go dead, uh, you will be a bit, uh, in a big uh, uh, trouble then. So hook up uh, a good uh, supply, but if you don't, okay, if you don't have a good supply, you just need to unplug the electric fan wires in this car. It's they are down there. It's hard to show you. Down there. Uh, you just need to unplug it or find the fuse for for them and uh, unplug it. Uh, just a tip, so you don't have a problem when reading the ECM. Uh, in my case, I have a good supply, so uh, I'm not going to unplug it. I'm now now going to hook up my equipment to the car that I'm going to use for reading the ECM. I'm going to use a case. Okay, so I hooked up the case to the OBD to socket, and now I'm going to put it on ignition. Uh, I think we have a day white. The uh, motor. It's, I have a good habit to turn on everything that is not needed. The navigation is off. Okay. We're on ignition. So I'm now going to start the software. Okay, so this is the key suit. This is what I'm using. Just want to show you. Hope you can see it on the camera. Searching for three liter diesel, two hundred thirty two horsepower, Bosch ADC sixteen CP thirty four, or which you socket for reading. Okay. Kind of slow process, but what you can do, just follow steps. information about the ECM. Now I'm sure you can see it with the camera but as matter.
Okay, finally we start the reading process. Uh, it's going to be slow, that's for sure. 12 minutes. Okay, I will go back when we are close to 100%. Maybe you've seen, I have a battery level at 11.67 volts. I don't know what the software is showing that when I put the multimeter on the battery, I'm getting much uh, more than this. Uh, it's not the first card that I'm reading. And, uh, it's not the problem with the card, it's the problem is the software maybe. Uh, it's not the uh, original one. Uh, but just to know, I hook up uh, uh, char charging device to the battery and it have much more voltage on the battery than this. I think it's safe to read the ECM at uh, 11 volts. Less than 11 is kind of risky. So above uh, 11 volts it's okay to, to read um, ECM. Okay, so we are almost ready. Uh, I just wanted to point out the, uh, about the diagnostic that I made. Uh, between the, the specification of the EGR and the actual value, uh, this is not a short check because um, the EGR may be faulty because that there can be more actual fault than the specification. Uh, but in this situation, mo most of the time, uh, we're going to get a, a EGR code about that. But doesn't matter, the, the client wants just to remove the DPF. Uh, he he done it before and doesn't matter if the EGR is, uh, is better or not, he just wanted to remove it, so I did not go any further in the diagnostic of the DPF. Just I wanted to show you some tips about uh, diagnosing it. This is Actually, probably 95% to be certain if uh, you get uh, values like that. Okay, now I'm going to save the file. Okay, again. This is annoying. I think. And we are done. Uh, now we need to. Uh, do some changes to the file that we read it. Uh, the file is 2 megabytes. Uh, so we need to put it in LinOS and do some changes so uh, the ECM stop uh, trying to find the, the DPF and setting uh, the current limp mode. So we're going to remove this uh, uh, codes in the car, we're going to zero uh, the pits and going to write the file again in the ECM. Uh, I will show you the process about the writing, about editing the file, I'm not going to show you because it's not so easy. Okay, so the file is ready and now we are going to write the file to the ECM. Level DPF. Once again, we're going to turn on and top the, the ignition. But this time it's already identified the, uh, the ECM, so it's going to be a little bit faster. Time we have what more votes.
Okay, I'll uh, come back when the process is near to the finish. Okay, so as I was getting some uh, problem with the equipment. It was saying that I have the incorrect file, but that was because I have a problem with the charging system. My charger go bad, so I need to do some old school charging stuff. So. I hooked up other car to the battery so to give a good charging on the car to be able to safely write the new file. So don't want, I'm not advising you to do it that way, but this is the old school way and it's one of my colleagues who gave me the idea so thanks to him and uh, I will be back after a minute. Okay, so we are almost ready. You can see the countdown. Again, some annoying switch on and off. Right, it will complete it. So for sure I was a problem with the charging. I need to new charger. Okay, we must be ready. Okay, so the most important thing after uh, writing a new ECM, it's not a new ECM, uh, writing an ECM, uh, it's to see if the car is going to start. So let's see. It's going to be hard started because of the go box. Come on, come on. Okay, he starts. So, no check engine lights. Everything seems okay. Um, I'm going to hook up the vacuum and see can I clean the DPF fault code or is it uh, there actually okay so I hooked up the vacuum now going to see the fault codes and then, if you remember right I didn't erase any of the code and like you can see there is no code for the GPS go plug go plug go plug only go pack codes. So this is what you need to do to remove the DPF. I'm sure most of you guys will not have a device for reading the ECM, but it's not so expensive, so you can uh, buy it from anywhere and uh, find and buy the file from. You need to find uh, uh, some professional that uh, making files and buy it from him eventually. It's kind of a risky job, but. If you don't want to take any risk, just find a shop that can do it for you. Thanks for watching.